If you're anything like me, you've been experimenting with Notebook LM, an experimental AI product by Google. And what makes Notebook LM amazing is the scale of data that you can supply. You can have up to 50 sources. Each of those sources can be a large PDF, multiple pages of markdown, etc. And all of that can go into an AI that you can query using a chat interface just like ChatGPT. If you're excited by that, then did you know that the Gemini model is available to developers and you can make a no-code app that would take in that huge amount of data and uh, use it to generate a response. We've done videos on RAG before, that's basically how you can take a large amount of data, retrieve what's necessary, like shrink it down, funnel it down, pass it into an AI. Uh, honestly, maybe in the future, that's not gonna be necessary simply because the context windows on these AI models are simply gonna grow and grow and grow. Just to give you an idea, this is how much Gemini uh, 1.5 exceeds both Claude and uh, ChatGPT's uh, context window by the scale of data that you can pass into it. And you can do this in a bubble app uh, right away today. Let me show you how. So I've got, I'm here in the bubble API connector and I've connected to the Google Gemini API. Now the way I've done this is by going into the Google AI studio and saying get code. And it gives me this, and it, th these are all the clues that I need. By the way, if you don't see this, it's probably because you're on Python, and we change it to CURL. And so we know it's a post request. Uh, we know that uh, we are authenticating with the key in the URL. We know that we need content type application JSON, and then the bit that we're actually sending is this part here. So let's flick back into the Bubble API connector and I'll show you how that's all connected up. But before I go any deeper, if you're wanting to learn Bubble, if you're excited about building no-code AI-powered apps and you want to really accelerate that process, then click the link down in the description and head over to planetnocode.com because we've got a huge library of resources and courses available to members to really accelerate you towards launching your MVP. So here's how we connect. Uh, I add in an API, I've labeled this Google Gemini, private key in URL. Now this is different to Anthropic and to OpenAI because that would be private key and header. Then we have our key name, which is key. There's my API key in there. And then we don't need to say content type application JSON as of a few months ago. That's a default in Bubble unless you specify a different value. So we can then move right the way down to here and we've got our API call. So I call it send message and I have it as an action. And that's because I want this to be an action. A button is clicked and this action takes place in a workflow. But I'm gonna show you how to do that before ending this video. It's a post request. Remember that date is, is available to me here. It has to be post. Uh, and then I pasted uh, the content in, uh, the body content here. And the only thing I've changed is I've used the triangle brackets to add in a merge field or a dynamic value called message. Uh, in fact, something a little bit buggy about that. If I just clear it, it'd be just like this, message. Okay, uh, and then I need to uh, make this JSON, well, I'm not making JSON safe, I'm putting the speech marks back in just so I can initialize the call. And so I'll say something like, hello, you know, this is a 1 million token context window and I'm gonna send one word just to test it. So let's send uh, hello, and I get this back. Very similar to other AI models, I'm just looking for the contents, parts, text, and that's the bit that I'd show back to my user. So how would I go about sending a huge amount of data as part of the context window here? Well, if I go onto a page, now this is very rough, we've got many, many videos about using AIs in Bubble, um, but let's just imagine that this text box is, uh, you could fetch it from a database, you could fetch it from another uh, AI or API, um, but that's just gonna be what we pass in, and then we'll just say run AI. And so all I need to do Thanks, Greg. All I need to do is go into plugins and find the API call that I've set up. You're only gonna see this if you have it set as action and if you've initialized it successfully. And so here it is, Google Gemini send message. And then I just need to make this bit dynamic. So I'm gonna say arbitrary text. And arbitrary text is a great way of grouping text together so that we can make sure that the whole thing is JSON safe. Uh, and that's going to add those speech marks back in. It's also going to deal with any punctuation that could mess with the code. Uh, so I could say, 
I could fetch any data here. I'm just taking the multi-line input. But you know, this is where you put in those pages and pages and pages of text in order to make use of that amazing context window. And then I could say something like uh, summarize this data. In fact, in fact, I could, the way that you would really set up is something like, uh, so I had an input question here. So I'm gonna basically have it so that any data in here is queried by the question and the AI gets the response. So let's go back into here. And so I would say, I'd say uh, background data, that gets that from the multi-line input. And then I'd say this question, and then I'd get my input. Okay, now that's gonna run it. You're not saving the data, you're not showing the data to the user. We've got other videos covering that. If you wanna see what the next step is, please leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll post a, a link to one of our videos. Remember, if you want some one-to-one -one help with using the Bobway API Connect, you can always book a one-to-one -one call with me. Click the coaching button down in the description to do that.